We're in Balgoni, Saskatchewan. Nothing says good morning like a good old truck stop croissant. It's actually not bad. Tastes better than it looks. So we're ready to go. All set, truck is ready to go. I've double checked my route. I was reaching for the clutch. This is an automatic truck. There is no clutch. All right, let's keep that in mind today. Put her in D, I guess, and hope she knows what to do. There we go. There we go. We're sitting at about 80,000 pounds. This load came out of the US, so it's loaded to the max for uh, US standards. Drag my butt out of here without hitting anything. I don't need to grab fuel here. I'm gonna fuel up in Saskatoon later today. I have to go there and pick up a uh, pickup truck. Pick up a pickup. And that's my reload. What's this guy doing? Excusing me, I need to go straight. Little bit of a kerfluffle here this morning. Oh, and another guy's coming. I would have gone through the pumps there, but the pumps are all blocked up right now. And another guy's coming. Okay, rush hour in the morning. You know, there wasn't one truck moving around the lot when I started rolling. But that's how it happens, right? As soon as you start moving, that's when everybody else starts moving. Are we good to go now after this guy? Oh, and there's another guy. What are these guys doing parked here? Oh, what chaos. Yikes. These guys should not be parked here. How are all these guys gonna get out? Those guys there. So I see truck stops are exactly the same. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Everybody's blocking each other in. Oh, this guy's grabbing that trailer there. Okay. Yeah, I think this these guys here parked here and are sleeping here. This guy's having a hard time just hooking up to his trailer. He's lucky there's no one beside him here. I mean, yeah, all these people, you can see the tracks they've had to... Oh boy, that that's not cool when people do that and block everybody in like that. That's not cool. And look at this guy here too. He's blocking everybody in as well. Oh, truck stop chaos this morning. Like, how are these guys gonna get out? Well, he's sitting in his cab at least, so I guess he's not sleeping there. There's this guy here. Wow. So this is actually the worst I've ever seen Balgoni. Usually I would come out through the pumps there, so uh, I wasn't expecting it to be so congested on this side here. Usually you can get tons of trucks, like both directions on that side. I was lucky I didn't have any trucks coming this way. That would have been a big mess. This guy's parked on the street here already. Eek. I'm glad I got here early last night. It definitely pays to be early when you're uh, looking for truck parking. It's gotten so much busier. Just every year, it just keeps getting more and more and more trucks. And the truck stops aren't being built fast enough. So there's always a lack of parking. And then, you know, they go and they build a, you know, a 150 spot truck, spot truck stop. And everyone's like, wow, awesome, just in time. And boom, it's filled up. And now we need another one. And then we gotta wait years for another one. <laughs> oh man. But hey, we're out of there. We're out of there. We can now start our day, officially. 
I have 25 kilometers or about, I don't know, 12 miles, 15 miles. I'm gonna take these tarps off the load behind me, get that freight off of there. And, uh, oh wait, no, I wanna go left, that's right. I'm going left. I can take this route into Northern Regina and that'll get me in there closer. Are you gonna stop, buddy? You are hauling. Are you, are you gonna stop? Okay. Man, school bus. Aggressive. <laughs> Got a red light, bud. <laughs> Guess he was turning. Okay, so this will spit us out into northern Regina. I'll get this trailer unloaded. We're headed up empty to Saskatchewan. It's supposed to be a one-ton pickup truck, so I'm guessing it's going to be like a dually pickup or something. I don't know. Pretty simple to tie down. I have tire straps. So four tire straps, one on each tire, and uh, we'll be off. I don't know if I'm gonna make it home tonight though. It's gonna be quite a long day. I might just sleep in the truck tonight. I'm, I'm thinking that's probably what's gonna happen. Otherwise, I'll probably end up being home at midnight or later. So I still gotta bring this truck back to the yard, park the trailer, park the truck, get my stuff out of the truck. I will worry about that later. That's an evening problem. That's a tonight problem. Let's worry about this morning problems. Let's get this freight off this trailer. Feels good to be back out here near Regina. I haven't been here in a while. People out here are very nice. You guys remember this big old refinery here in Regina? Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is where they refine diesel fuel. We got a refinery here and we have a big refinery in Edmonton. And that's where most of Western Canada gets their diesel fuel from. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a scientist. This is obviously where they keep their snow now. And well, that's nice and neat and organized. Look, they got little yard lights in there and everything. Okay, look at all that snow that they've dumped in there, eh? <laughs> wow. Winnipeg has a couple of snow hills too, except instead of like taking up so much space, they create like a big snow mountain. A few of them in the city. There's one on uh, in the southwest corner. There's one on the south perimeter, one on the north, sort of like in all corners of the city. And they have these massive bulldozers. The, the dump trucks come in, dump their load of snow, like this guy right there. And they have these massive bulldozers that just come to the bottom and just push all the snow to the top. That'd be a pretty good job to do. All you do is just go back and forth and back and forth all day, just pushing snow to the top. Apparently they get like 40 bucks an hour too, and that was 10 years ago. I bet they get like 50 bucks an hour already. Wouldn't be surprised, those heavy, uh, heavy bulldozers, heavy equipment operators. I bet they're sitting pretty fine. They got a nice heated cab. That's yeah, a pretty good gig, I think, but still doesn't beat trucking. I think this is the best gig to have. Who wouldn't want to be a paid tourist? Oh, that refinery stinks a bit. Whew. It's a really warm day outside, so I have my window rolled down. It's only uh, minus seven outside. So that's probably uh, about what, 20 Fahrenheit, something like that, I don't know. I thought the right lane ended. That's why I was in this lane. It's hard to tell with all the snow on the road, eh? <laughs> okay, so we got a thousand meters to get into the right lane there. Shouldn't be a problem. I'll just let all these little four-wheelers go. Give her, bud. Come on, 4WD. Give her. Come on. Thank you. Go after the intersection and make my move. There we go, there we go. All right, that guy pulled out of there. I gotta drive into that empty door there. We'll unload inside, which is awesome. Gonna roll the tarps up inside. I'll have to 
to talk to you guys once I'm done here though, okay? Gonna go unload right in there. Drive in and back out. This is a treat. I was ready to do all this in the cold snow this morning. I got here, came around the back and saw that it was an indoor, an indoor drop, made my day. And the guy here helped me take my tarps off and roll them up. So it was really easy, turned out really good. Backed out of there, all done. Empty step deck behind me. We are off to Saskatoon. It's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good day. Man, I love this. <laughs> uh, one day, one day I'm gonna have my W9 and we'll be back, you'll see. One day. I just love driving this Kenworth. Just imagine if it had that nice long hood in front of it yet, the studio sleeper behind me. Big pipes, you can hear me coming from a quarter mile away. Maybe more than that, half a mile away. Maybe a mile away, who knows? The options are limitless. <laughs> One day we're gonna have some fun. Well, yeah, we're gonna go to Andy the Kenworth guy and we're gonna get set up. I'm gonna wait for this little dude. Where are you going, little guy? Give her, bud. <laughs> now, how do I get out of here? Where am I going? Where am I going? Guess I should have figured that out before I came down the driveway here, eh? I'm gonna go to Saskatoon. Saskatoon, let's see here. So we're facing south right now. We wanna go right. And then right again, and that'll turn us, spit us out onto the 11, which will take us up way up there to Saskatchewan. Okay, I think I know where I'm going now. Is there nobody behind me? Okay, there's nobody behind me. I'm just gonna park right here in the driveway and I'm gonna figure out what my address is that I actually have to go to. Put that into the GPS right away. Karen. Where are we going, Karen? Let's see. Can you guys see it on there? Let me take you off my head for a second. So you can zoom in. Okay. So. You can see us there. That's Saskatchewan. Alright, here we go. There's the U.S. Here's where we are. We're above eastern Montana right now. There's home over here. Southeast Manitoba. We're gonna go from Regina to Saskatoon and then back to Winnipeg. Right there. You have 11 hours and 54 minutes of remaining drive time. Okay, so we got... Actually, I have 11.54 until midnight and then I have another 30 minutes. That doesn't make sense. Huh. I don't know, we'll figure this out later. We got plenty of time to get to Saskatoon. It's about a three hour drive. It's gonna be good. So I wanna turn right here. No, I wanna turn left. It's telling me to turn left, okay. Left. Here we go. And of course, rush hour comes just as I push in the brakes. Ah, uh, that is the story of my life. But that's okay. We're trucking though. As long as we're trucking, I'm happy. Oh, this guy's got his left signal on. He's probably coming in here. Okay, I'm gonna go. Good timing, there we go. Get out of his way. 600 meters, turn left on, Ross They sure got a lot of snow here yesterday, thanks. That blizzard that I went through must have gone through here first, because by the time we got to Balgoni last night, uh, we were through the blizzard, but all the way from, I'd say like, uh, Mooseman, Saskatchewan, all the way up to Balgoni was just a bad blizzard. Bad. Just 
scooch through here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. So I'm going to turn left up ahead on Ross Avenue. That's going to take me up to Ring Road, I guess. And onto the highway. Timmy's. Timmy's. I see Timmy's. I bet you anything they don't have truck parking. I bet you anything they don't have truck parking. Break time. Timmy's. We're in Davidson, Saskatchewan, between Regina and Saskatchewan. I'm go around to the back here. They got tons of truck parking here. I spent many nights here before. Lots of space here. Uh oh, somebody hit that light pole over there. That wasn't like that last time I was here. Karen, we're going to Tim's. Calm down. Timmy's. Tim's, Tim's, Tim, Tim, to Ruse. Tim, Tim, Timmy, Tim. Timmy, Tim, Tim, Tim's. Tim's. Timmy, Timmy, Tim, Tim's. What is that? That looks cool. Nice. You, anybody know what that is? What's that guy hauling over there? Fascinating. One of the cool things about the job is you get to see all the different kinds of things, all the different machines in the world, you know, and how we transport them. I'm gonna come in right beside Mr. Co-op here. Right here. head in there. I'm just going to grab a wrap. I don't have any food in the truck, which is not very smart. I don't recommend that. You should always have food, at least three days worth of food in the truck with you everywhere you go, especially in wintertime. That's fine. Ugh. I'm a little nervous. Usually I would bring food along, but this is going to turn into a two-nighter. I'm not going to get home tonight yet, and I'm fine with that. I'll probably get very close to home. I might even get to the yard back in Manitoba, but I'll probably sleep in the truck. Otherwise, I'll be waking everybody up, getting, well, all the dogs and Britt, wake them up at like two in the morning when I get home, because when I get home, the dogs, of course, freak out. And then they're wondering why I'm home in the middle of the night, because first they think I'm like some kind of thief, and they go nuts, and then they realize it's me, and then they go nuts again, and then Britt's all wide awake by the time I get them calmed down, so it's, it's just better. We don't have kids yet, but I'm imagining once we have kids, that's definitely gonna be a big no-no coming home in the middle of the night. You may as well just sleep in the truck. <laughs> so yeah, just gonna, this place is pretty busy. Right there, I'm gonna go across, grab a coffee, grab a wrap or something, something for my belly. And uh, we'll pick up some food in Saskatoon again before we leave there. I just wanna make sure I got something in my stomach so that I can go straight to the customer and I'll load up this one ton pickup and uh, not have a grumbling stomach the whole time. This is really busy though. Look, you got more trucks come steady stream coming in and out. It's only been a year since I've been out here. And every place I stop at is way busier, like noticeably way busier already. 
the roads here in Saskatoon aren't the greatest. They're covered in snow and ice and slush and salt. But we're getting there. We're just about to our pickup. Boat half a mile away just up here. I just can't go very fast because <laughs> I'm gonna throw myself out the window if I do. Good thing I'm wearing a seatbelt. We're loaded up, just grab fuel at the Flying J. I guess I gave my position away on Facebook a little. <laughs> There's a bunch of you out here in Saskatoon that <laughs> tracked me down. Shout out to you. All right, so, can one. Let's go show you what we got. We got an old Dodge. We got an old Dodge, like an old Dodge. I don't know how old it is. Well, I didn't do it, okay? I didn't do it. Loaded like that. I put protection in here uh, so that the lug nuts wouldn't mess with my tire straps. It's a Ram 5500 heavy duty one ton. The flatbed box or flatbed on the back. <coughs> Excuse me. We got the wheels tied down all the way around. Someone in Manitoba picked it up. So they're obviously gonna do some work to it. What I found interesting is here, look at this. What is this? Is that a wheel or something? At first I thought that was an airbag. I'm like, what would an airbag be doing there? Like for suspension or something? Well, it's just, maybe it's just a bump stop. I, I don't know. But this, uh, this old girl's seen some better days. Windows don't go up. This door back here is all messed up. That window's shattered out. The door's all messed up there, but it's closed. It's staying closed. <laughs> it's coming back to uh, Manitoba with me. Someone in Winnipeg is gonna show it some love and, or maybe it's just for parts, I don't know. Who knows, it's not my business. My business is just getting it back to Winnipeg. Okay. Shall we? Shall we roll out? Roll out, rolling out. So I tied that truck down uh, about a couple miles away. <coughs> Came here, checked everything, made sure it hadn't settled or anything. Tightened it up a little bit. Oh, what's this? There's like a, oh, he's got it. No, he's only taking part of it. What's going on here? He's piling snow in the driveway. Well, that's an interesting place to pile the snow. Look at these guys just giving her. This is the only entrance and exits, my friends. I don't know. I'm not gonna tell them how to do their job. Oh, look at that, I just smoked it. You see that, he's having fun, he's having fun. Now this guy's just giving her. Can I go now? I'm going. I'm going for it. Oh, oh, no, he's not done. He's not, he's not done. I'm going for it. As soon as he goes that way. I'm going for it. Sending it. My turn. Look at all that snow. Yikes. Well, you gotta clear it up somehow, eh? Okay, so we're gonna go about a half hour down the road, stop again, check those uh, tire straps again. Each one of those tire straps is rated for just over 3,300 pounds. So about 6,600 pounds for the front and for the back. That gives us about, what, 13,000 pounds. And the truck is uh, registered as only 5,000 pounds. But even if it's a little bit more than that, there's no way that truck is more than 13,000 pounds. So we're good. Those, uh, that's what those straps are made for. They're made for specifically for this. We have a whole bunch of them. We haul a lot of vehicles, so we got all the equipment for it. That's why I brought them along. Now I gotta go there, and then there, and then whoop around there, and then we're gonna go down the 11. We're gonna go through Regina on the way home. It's 50 kilometers or 30 miles further, but it takes just about the same amount of time as going down the two-lane Yellowhead Highway, if you're familiar with the areas out here. And plus, this way you get four-lane divided highway all the way home. 200 meters, turn left on. 
This is where we were when our uh, our Frankie had his surgery. We stayed at the motel just down the street there. And we went to that nice big dog park. I drive past, I think about it every time. We have an awesome dog park here in Saskatoon. You have less than 60 minutes remaining before you will need to fulfill the shift hours requirements in accordance with section 13, three of the Canadian Federal Hours of Service regulations. Yeah, yeah, Karen, you and all your fancy talk. All you have to say is you got an hour left. So we're in Brandon. I'm gonna call it a night here. Do the rest of this tomorrow. Got an hour left of my drive time as Karen so eloquently let, a, let me know there. I won't need it though, because I just need to get to the other side of this parking lot over here. Shut her down. So as soon as I'm into the lot here, I turn my headlights off, leave my marker lights on. Once again, that's just to be polite. That way when I'm moving around here, I'm not shining my headlights into anybody's cab. Courtesy goes a long way. I saw that my spot was still available here. Somebody uh, must have put my name on it or something. All the way at the end here in the corner. That's where I always park. Well, this guy's fancy undercarriage lights. Look at that. Fancy. Right in the back over here. This is where I like to park. And that's it, everybody. We're parked and ready to go to sleep. I'm pretty tired, so I don't know why I'm wearing this vest again. It's such a habit to wear it in the truck already. I don't, I don't have to be wearing it, but. Here I am. Some questions just don't have answers. Why is he wearing his vest all the time? I don't know. I don't know. I'm wearing it. I don't even know. I'm not going to waste any time thinking about it, though. I'm going to go to sleep. I hope you have a good night. I hope you have a good day, wherever you are. Uh, hit the like button and hit subscribe. This has been a fun trip. Tomorrow we'll get home, and Monday we'll be back at it.